Okay, so believe me, I don't really think I'm being facetious with the video's title and the thumbnail, talking about how Detroit believes that Joe Valeno is not yet ready to make the jump. And for most people, talking about that, it may not come as a surprise, because Valeno is a pretty young guy. He was drafted out of the 2018 NHL entry draft at the end of the first round. If you've been following this YouTube channel for a year, no, not a year, my gosh, two years, three years, almost three years, you'd know that I actually have been in love with Joe Valeno's game as a whole. It's why I made a video about him in the Why I Want series where the Canucks, where the Canucks were picking seventh overall, and I was like, okay, if the Canucks chose Valeno at seventh, I would have been okay with that. It would have been bold, it would have been ambitious, yes, indeed, it would have been those things, but it would have been something that I saw value in. So, I am definitely not the guy to come out here and talk about how I'm a Joe Valeno hater or whatever, but this is kind of just me defending myself from the barrage of comments that might come over talking about how I'm super hating on this guy, which isn't the case here. But, before we get into this Joe Valeno discussion, let's talk about you, because yesterday we had ourselves a video, and so many of you glorious, magnificent magnificent people commented down in the comment section below calculus because that was our keyword of the day for that video stay tuned to the end of this video for the comment keyword for the chance to be featured in the next video but let's talk about the red wings joe valeno moritz cider because it was recently revealed earlier this week that joe valeno and moritz cider are both going to stay in sweden this was from Steve Eiserman's recent press release earlier this week on YouTube, I believe, but we did indeed have word from the man at the top himself saying that yes, for both Moritz Sider and Joe Valeno, these guys are staying in the SHL until their season is over. Some of these guys, like Michael Rasmussen, for example, will be coming over to Detroit for training camp, but the other guys, nah, they're sticking around. And the reason I've labeled this video in the way that I have is because this isn't the first time we have seen something specifically on Joe Valeno talking about whether or not he is capable of playing in the NHL or whether or not the plan is for him to be doing that. Let's go over back into a previous article on The Athletic talking about what Steve Eiserman said about Joe Valeno and his NHL readiness. This is an article over here on The Athletic published by Scott Wheeler. Again, link in the description as always because we want to promote this stuff. But... A part of this article was indeed posted onto the Detroit Red Wings subreddit, and as a result, we're going to be pulling from there. Take a look at this. This is what C. Weiserman says on Joe Valeno's NHL readiness. After conversations with Hughes, this is Joe Valeno's agent, his parents, and Red Wings GM Steve Eiserman, they settled on the SHL's Malmo Redhawks, with the help of former Red Wings defenseman Nick Cronwall. Even though a contract with the Red Hawks meant that Valeno would have to stay for the entire season and miss Detroit's training camp, which he would have been able to attend had he gone to the Czech Republic. In the bigger picture of things, there's no substitute for continuing to develop and get better, Hughes said. Iserman said, I can't look at this player I saw in March and say that he's ready to play in the NHL right now. And that doesn't mean he's not ready, but I can't guarantee it. So what do you do? He's better to go off and continue to play. Now, it's kind of an interesting discussion to have because you could definitely make the debate that for the other guy who was staying over there in Sweden, Moritz Sider, he probably could play in the NHL at a very minimum kind of role. That's probably a debate that you could have. Some people would debate that he could probably play more than just a very limited role, and that Moritz Sider probably could be ready for top four minutes in the NHL depending on who he plays against. But... The plan for both of these guys is indeed to stay in Sweden, and based off of what we saw from Steve Eiserman in this Wheeler interview, it does indeed kind of make a lot of sense that Valeno specifically would stick around in Sweden, plus with the fact that he isn't actually allowed to leave, because I believe it goes on that way because he's a junior player in the SHL, or because he's a rookie, something like that. I forgot the exact terms, but we've seen a few other SHL young guys who are over here who aren't actually allowed to go in the NHL this year. Guys like Alexander Holtz, Lucas Raymond, Noel Gundler. These guys aren't allowed to play in the NHL until their SHL seasons are concluded, and it appears that Joe Valeno is under that same umbrella. So, for Joe Valeno last season, you can go over his elite prospects, take a look at the stats, take a look at what this guy was able to accomplish in the most recent season of play. Many Red Wings fans would be quick to point out that even though he was in a first-year role in the AHL, he had 23 points in 54 games. That's not amazing. Obviously, you know there's room for improvement here. He was a really good player at the World Junior, 6.6 games played, a very key, pivotal two-way center for Team Canada, but... 
what Steve Eiserman is talking about, how he saw this player in March and he was like, yeah, I don't really think that guy's NHL ready. I don't think that guy who is 20 years old is at his maximum capacity, I guess, in terms of AHL play. And it looks like once the SHL finishes up, because I believe the SHL's end will be sometime in the first half or the first quarter of 2021, I would probably guess that the next piece of the puzzle for these guys would be to either go to the AHL or the NHL. For Cider, I could definitely see him at least challenging for an NHL spot, depending on how exactly he plays when he comes over for training camp or whatever. Not even training camp, because the season would have already begun by then, but like, practices and all that. You know what I'm saying? As for Valeno, I don't really know if he would be a taxi squad guy or just a straight-up AHL guy. It wouldn't really surprise me if it was either, because, again... There still is an ability to look at what Valeno did in the AHL last year and say, yeah, there's improvement to be had here. This guy is not like a Moritz Sider, who was already so superbly good in the AHL that you could make the debate that it's not even really worth it for him to go back. The way he's playing in the SHL right now, this Moritz Sider, man, this guy's doing so, so well. Take a look at the numbers over here. Let's pull up his Elite Prospects page as well. Moritz Sider, in this season's worth of play at 19 years of age, playing for the regular BK is at 12 points in 17 games. My gosh, if you go to the SHL and you sort by only defensemen, take a look at who else is here on this list. Yeah, Moritz Sider is one of the top producing defenders in the entire league. Top 20 in points over here, just barely outside the top 10. And, you know, that's very good to see. As for Valeno, though, as we noted, he's playing for the Malmo Redhawks. 11 points, 21 games, certainly not bad, you know. We had a few highlights earlier this season where we saw what he was doing with the SHL club. There was a really nice assist that he had in one of these YouTube highlight packages where Moritz Sider was actually the opposing defender, and he kind of got a little bit uh, rocked, I would say. So... There certainly is some room here, and obviously, you know, both of these guys, they're still young. These guys are going to be the future of the Red Wings, part of the middle core, I guess. Sider, you could debate, could be part of the top core, especially when you have a whole bunch of other defenders who are available in this year's draft who might be able to complement a guy like Moritz Sider very well. And on that note, you know, we spoke about yesterday how I believe the Red Wings are still going to be very bad in the standings, and so many of you in the comments were giving me some very good insight as to how exactly it makes you feel. So many were like, okay, well, we've been good for so long, it's okay to be bad, plus, the fact is, this Red Wings team is gonna get another good player at the top of the 2021 draft, whether that's Luke Hughes or Owen Power or whatever, Simon Edvinson, you can have a very, very nice left-handed defender playing alongside of Moritz Snyder. So, that's kind of how I think about it as well, because, hey, the Red Wings are going to get a good player regardless, and whoever can go first overall in the 2021 draft could probably also go somewhere in the top four in general, fourth overall, maybe fifth overall, depending on who you ask, because this draft is so spread open that a first overall pick might be as valuable as a fifth overall pick. You really don't know. So who knows if the Red Wings are going to get screwed over in that draft lottery again, but... When it comes to two of these guys, Sider and Valeno, Sider sticking around in the SHL, who knows what he does when he comes back. For Valeno, Steve Eiserman said it about a month ago that he doesn't see him as an NHL-ready guy, which is perfectly fine, it's just noteworthy to me because he indeed is also sticking around in the SHL too. So comment down in the comment section below, Antarctica. Because when I think about Joe Valeno, I think about the team he played for before, the St. John Sea Dogs, and the Sea Dogs kind of make me think of seals, and seals kind of make me think of polar cold winter animals, and it gets me thinking about penguins, which makes me think about Antarctica. So for a chance to be featured in the next Red Wings video, comment down in the comment section below, Antarctica. Also, let me know your thoughts about Joe Valeno sticking around, Moritz Sider sticking around, and how exactly these evaluations go for these two players. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Schwarzenegger 99, and bye.